Hey everybody, welcome to the Free Mind Podcast. It's Tuesday, January 23rd. We have James Tan, founder of Urbana Yerba Mate. Let's jump right in and listen to James. Yeah, story. so um, my name is James and uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Urbana. Um, we started in 2017 and we are a Yerba Mate wellness company. Excellent. So what inspired you to start Urbana and, and how did you come up with the name? Um, we had a couple name iterations. It wasn't called Urbana from the start. Um, I was really passionate about plant medicine, um, nutrition, um, physical health. Uh, and so I had stumbled upon your mate. And for me, like I, I had not had a consistent source of caffeine, coffee made me super jittery. Um, and I just fell in love with your mate, the plant. And um, I use it a lot for fasting and I discovered a lot of the benefits. You know, I obviously had read them, but then experientially it, it grew my passion for it. And um and then traveling around to South America and um, seeing the way that Yerba Mate connects people together, I was inspired to create a brand that was more than just a, a, a tea, more than just a beverage, but also a, a community of people who gather for wellness. And so we throw all wellness events on the side. That's kind of the thing that makes our brand uh, a little more than just a food and beverage company. Talk to me a little bit about from a design standpoint. I'm a very visual learner and very drawn to brands from a visual standpoint. And that's that was just a huge draw in for me with your packaging, your design, even like the mobile carts you're using at events. Like everything is designed to a, to a, such a beautiful level. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny that you say that because we were super lean funded. Um, you know, my buddy Alex, he had done a lot of the design. Um, we weren't really working with designers or design firms. We just didn't have the money. Um, so we kind of threw some things together and, you know, we had some themes and we also, you know, enabled and empowered lots of our friends to just paint and then do art for us. So you know, that, that art we got. Um, used and then we had one of our friends do like a kind of a mural and, and it was inspired by the yerba mate leaves and then um our own motto which is finding your flow state it's like a, having the healthy energy to pursue life's passions whatever brings it to the present moment and the, how that gives you a sense of mental health and well-being and, and just make sure you relay the compliments to everybody i've been in this for 20 years and it's very hard to relay the stylistic and lifestyle of your brand when it comes to the packaging and when it comes to marketing a lot of people want to promote the ingredients or whatever else but i just i just want to give it the compliment out there you guys you guys full, fully from a holistic level like really embraced it and you know exactly what when you look at that package on the shelf, you know exactly what lifestyle that is. You get what it is, and you understand the mission. And it's just a it's 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 a very not no, not normal, I would say. And sometimes in food and beverage, a lot of people go the easy routes. And um, when it comes to design, but you guys nailed it. It uh, it took us some time, you know. I'll say yeah. like when you go to a design firm, they get you this whole package, and they do all these um, these experiments with you, and they say, hey, what does this color make you feel? How does this line? Should it be curvy? Should it be you know sharp? Whatever. Um, and for us, like it was just all trial and error. And I'll say there were some many, many iterations of Urbana, um, and, and even prior before we were called that, that were not cohesive. And, you know, we didn't know our identity. Were we a wellness brand? Were we focused on this community that we're building or South American vibes or, you know, um, and, and it was really a process of, of unfolding um, exactly what we wanted it to be. And it, it was very organic. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and how did you kind of come about with uh, discovering the health benefits and the culture of your mate and kind of what are the benefits you personally experienced from drinking it that drove you into making it a, a business? Yeah, so I first encountered Yerba Mate um, when I was in choir. Uh, a couple of dudes in my choir were drinking it, passing it around. Um, I drank it a little bit and you know, didn't really touch it again until much later in life. And um, when I was traveling, I encountered some Yerba Mate beverages um, and I was like, oh, this is interesting, you know, and we started this uh, create a company class in uh, UW um, and we decided, oh, let's make a Yerba Mate drink. And, you know, I was experimenting lots with different herbs and um, different plants, different roots, uh, adaptogens, things with uh, different health benefits. And so I started drinking Yerba Mate and um, it's a beautiful, beautiful plant uh, for so many, so many reasons. It's got so many vitamins and minerals. Um, antioxidant rich it's anti-inflammatory um it really promotes digestion which i think is really important because a lot of times we eat uh, we overeat and we don't breathe deeply and uh your mate promotes digestion and also promotes breathing with the theobromine and theophylline 
Um, those are found in acai and cacao. Uh, they're heart openers. They improve your vasodilation. And so uh, a lot of times the indigenous people would actually combine your say with other herbs to improve the bioavailability, improve the uptake. Uh, and so over the course of just drinking it a lot um, and seeing it fuel basically this business, uh, when I had very little money uh, living in a van, and just basically drinking lots of yerba mate uh, and being uh, passionate about the way it energized me to work on this um, and the level of focus because i do feel for me personally coffee gives me a lot of this uh, nervous energy like physical energy but not necessarily concentration uh, and i find that yerba mate differs in that way and its energy is quite unique um, and it's because it's less caffeinated, but it also has that theobromine theophylline. So it gives you that kind of head heart balance. Um, I think that's why a lot of athletes like Leo Messi, for example, love it for, for, um, for sport is because it, it makes you more energized, but not more nervous. Um, and, and sometimes I take tests in, in college and, and drink coffee before them and, and totally misread questions and, and, and just skip over it and, and, you know, fat finger when I'm typing and, and realizing that, that not all energy is, is good necessarily. Um, and so there was a, a level of uniqueness to the energy. And then uh, I developed this relationship to it when I started traveling to Brazil and found a supplier and um, the tradition and the, the connection to nature, the respect for nature that the people who cultivate it have uh, and the respect for each other. The inclusiveness of a mate circle um, where you can travel so many different places in south america um, and be invited to join a circle and it's so inclusive it's so inviting um, and it really showed me that holistic health is so much more than nourishment for the body but connections and so um, a big part of our business instead of marketing traditional ways which would be like putting stickers in in K cold cases and buying swag. We we throw wellness events, um, and uh, it's really been an awesome thing that plays into all my passions. And I found um, before I even knew yerba mate was the thing that brought all of my loves together. <laughs> it, it 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 was like I was inspired to pursue it, and so um, it, it really yeah it was so organic and I'm so appreciative now that this is the thing that I've staked my. <laughs> my life's work on and it really just it fills all my you know all my passions so that's that's awesome and and from a from a standpoint too now that you're you're in the, the business aspect you're on re, you're on retail shelves now and kind of where where can people find out where you are and and get, get your products yeah so right now we are distributed mostly in the pacific northwest um our biggest chain is qfc um we are uh looking to expand online as well um and i am looking to actually expand our products more into the loose leaf tea so we've been a small business we've been operating as a beverage company um i'll be honest beverage is in a small business type of company it's a raise a lot of capital it's a burn a lot of cash and look to exit and um, i didn't know that going in <laughs> uh, but i really want to create a sustainable business i really want to not sell it and, and make it something that continues to create good in the world and, and promote this wonderful herb. And, and I found like, honestly, so many people think that yerba mate is this yellow can beverage uh, called Guiaki and um, nothing against them, but it just doesn't resemble yerba mate at all. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, it's very caffeinated, it's very sweet and it doesn't taste like the herb. Um, and so uh, we, we are gonna expand online. I think online will be one of the best places to get us. Um, and I'm going to start launching some new products with uh, adaptogenic mushrooms, uh, CBD, and also this uh, wonderful powder. It almost resembles matcha. It's like the matcha of yerba mate. It's called Shimahan, and it, it only comes from the south of Brazil. Uh, so we're going to be launching a product here pretty soon, so everyone should be looking out for that one. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be like nothing uh, really that is out there for yerba mate, and so really excited about that's, that's, that sounds perfect. That's awesome. And it's really, it's, it's good to see like, this isn't, this isn't a jump for you. And you're not, you're not broken down. And I, mean, I know that as an entrepreneur myself, there's days where there's tears, there's days where there's laughter, there's days where there's, you know, cold showers, hot showers, all the mix in between ice showers, ice baths. But oh, yeah. 
you know, I can, I can see, and that's one of the reasons I love doing this podcast is I can see the joy, like in, in the fact that you're, you're controlling your life, you're controlling your destiny and you're taking something you're passionate about and spreading it out in the community. And that's just, that's just phenomenal. It's, um, it's part of the reason why our motto is find your flow state. And, um, I really think like you just follow your intuition and you don't worry too much and you let life develop you in the right way. And, and you end up just falling into your passion and there's something beautifully organic about, um, not overthinking it and just kind of following your, your intuition. Um, and the, the universe wants to see you thrive in the most beautiful way in harmony with it, you know? Um, I really believe that, and I, I had no idea I would love your Bamante so much or that this would become something that I was so passionate about. But you know, working on it for so long, and you know, the journey of every entrepreneur is they don't get paid for a long time, you know, and especially if you're in beverage. I'm telling you, I'm mourning all future beverage owners. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you, when you do what you love, it makes you rich in a way that you can never justify with a salary. So. No, that's that's, close to that's that's a great point. One of the um, one of my biggest drivers when I when I started doing this full time and got out of an exclusive contract to start spreading out and more controlling my time, and that's that became more valuable than anything else was being able to control my time and my pace. And yeah, things are things are bad some days and things are good some days, but at the end of the day, for the most part, I have control of my time. <laughs> so, um, and that's right. a, a, a valuable thing. I want to go and talk about um, sourcing your ingredients and mm -hmm. the quality and sustainability of your products. Uh, we've yeah. seen a lot over the past years of different supply chain issues and things like that. So we're without sharing your secrets, though, like how do you source your ingredients and then how do you ensure the sustainability of that supply chain? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. That's one of the things I am absolutely most proud of our brand. Um, for me, starting a business, a huge part of it was being able to control the ethics of my what, what my creative energy was being poured into because I, I, I did such a deep dive into business and um, for a while I was very hurt by what business was doing to the earth. <laughs> a very almost anti-business, to be honest, um, until I really opened myself up to see that, no, it's actually innovative businesses that are going to change the world. It's the people that want to do business better and do it and do it better to the point where people don't want to support the businesses that are doing things poorly. Um, my farm is in the southern state of Panama. Uh, it's in a Cruz Machado, and it's in Brazil. Um, it's beautiful. It's completely uh, permacultured and agroforestry. So basically, um, this farm has no plowing. It has no watering, no fertilizing. It literally just grows in the jungle. Um, and there's something so beautiful about the community of plants and the way that it enriches the soil and allows the yerba mate to grow um, with such vitality. <laughs> and I've really never been to any farm that is like that, uh, where you can't, you could never tell it's a farm looking at it from the sky. You know, it's really just forest jungle um, and it's super lush. Uh, the soil is just so rich and red. Um, and uh, so this this particular farm we work with, um, one thing that's special about them is that they don't have any uh, sales in internally in Brazil or in, in, in. So they actually only export, and because they do that, they go and get all of the highest certifications. So they are actually um, able to export to the EU, which is one of the highest uh, standards. Um, they have organic certifications from all over Brazil, um, Canada. North America, um, the United States, uh, Europe. Uh, they also sell to Asia, um, and they have a, working on the Rainforest Alliance certification, which is a very comprehensive. It's it's the way that you treat the land. It's also the way you treat your people. It's safety, um, and so this farm really goes above and beyond. It's a lot smaller uh, than the tr traditional yerba mate, um, and and the thing about business in Brazil and in a lot of places in South America is. Um, the big businesses can have certain practices that are not personally aligned with my ethical code of conduct. And, you know, when I first met this farm um, through a mutual friend who was also distributing, uh, Dave, shout out to Dave, uh, distributing some, uh, some products from Brazil, I was going to travel down there and it just felt right, you know, and, and uh, I was concerned that I was going to go to the farm and have a farm. And I was so pleasantly surprised that they were going above and beyond. Uh, and it gave me so much inspiration to say, I want to sell this. Mate. And I want to say, 
This is Brazilian permaculture, shade grown yerba mate. There is no pests, you know, there is no fertilizer, there's no spray, there's no watering. Uh, this is as natural as it gets. And um, there's no processing aids. Um, the farm runs on solar. It's, it's really a dream come true <laughs> to sell this yerba mate and to know, honestly, that when I drink it, it doesn't really taste like other mate. Uh, you can tell the quality is different. Um, you can tell that it's a lot greener and it's not smoked which is something that has been a sort of point of contention within Yerba Mate based off of a couple factors. The, the flavor that the smoking parts and the PAH, which are potentially hazardous uh, carcinogenic compounds that are found in Yerba Mate that's been smoked. And so the process that they're, they're using, uh, the way that they manage the land, uh, everything about it, I don't know that I could improve it. <laughs> and, uh, and so it, it's, it's a great product. I can't speak more, enough about the farm and the way that they're doing things. Um, they're a tight family. Everyone lives on the farm. Uh, everyone's part of the family, even if they're not, you know, they're, they throw lots of, uh, a bit of chow, like, uh, barbecues, like it's very popular in the South of Brazil. Um, and everyone's invited, everyone's, you know, really treated well. And, uh, I just, I really appreciated that going there, uh, knowing that a lot of workers are treated well on your day plantations. Um, it's definitely like become this industry in the south of Brazil and, and other places where um, there's a lot of money to be made and kind of lends itself to some characters that are unsavory, I suppose. Um, but just to see they have a level of respect for people and, and farm and, and the nature there. It's it's a beautiful thing. I'm super stoked that that's where we get our yerba mate from, and that it's very different, honestly, uh, in flavor and composition to the other ones. That's that's a, yeah. The um kind of when you get started out and when you're going through this, and and as a young entrepreneur into the food and beverage space, tell me a little bit about your life prior before you started this and making money selling selling this. What were you doing in your life prior to this? Is your career and, and occupational kind of financial dividends and whatever else <laughs> yeah so i actually uh, started um, this company in college uh, with my buddy john yeah um and we we put in you know like 5k of our own money each and we got incorporated which again i would not incorporate right away i would just kind of you know figure some stuff out first you don't have right, to do it right, 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 until you have to <laughs> don't, 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 don't go too official to yeah you know make it a hobby until it really needs to be something yeah uh, but we we you know we did all the kit and caboodle we raised a little bit of uh, angel money uh, from a, a wonderful investor who's been so supportive it's kind of a fun story i don't know if i should say this but it's my whatever you want yeah you know it's my previous business partners ex-girlfriend's father <laughs> but he is man so professional and just what a um what a spirit to have behind us and and just encouraging me to continue on and pursue my passion i, I cannot raise him enough and give him enough thanks for the support he's given me um but yeah we started it straight out of college um and we did not know a lot and there was there was a whole process honestly of I wasn't even telling people we were starting a business, you know, it was, it was more like I'm learning how to do business and I'm learning about myself. And I, I honestly feel that for the first, you know, three, four years, like we were, we were floundering hard. You know, if we didn't know what to do, I was making it in my garage, like in my, in my apartment, we, I had, I ordered a pallet of bottles that was like in the back corner of my apartment. And like, I was bench capping and like, <laughs> you know, my buddy was supposed to be going out driving around selling them and stuff, but it was like super painful every time, you know, you give out a sample, you're like, man, I spent like hours on that sample, you know, like I brewed tea, threw the kegs in the fridge, got them cold, hooked them up to the CO2, shook them to carbonate them. It was like, oh man, what a process. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, it, this was the first thing I, I worked some other, you know, kind of basic jobs, catering and, and, and whatnot. Um, but this was my first. You, got, you do what you got to do to drive the dream. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. I also, I also started in college as well. So my, 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 this is 20 years ago as a dormer business. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and I was way, and believe it or not, I was way ahead of social media. And I got laughed out of every client meeting because I was trying to build them Facebook groups and, and all these social media things. And people just said, get out of here, get out of here. So I finally found a client that was a little bit progressive at the time and understood what was going on. So I yeah, was, yeah I had one of the first Facebook groups in uh, Philadelphia before it was a Facebook group, like back in 2008, when you had to, you had to have a college uh, email address to join Facebook. So that was uh, the, not 2008, it was probably 2004, I'd say, I guess at that point. And then uh, 2004, 2005. And uh, then all of a sudden, I, I wanted to communicate. I was doing sales for, for beer. So I was going door to door at bars selling for a distributor. And I was like, man, this is crazy trying to communicate all these events that are going on. And how do I harness all this in one place? And uh, so I started a group called Nate's Bar Promotions. And literally, I would just every, every promotion I sold into at my accounts, I would just put in there. And then people would just keep following me around with all the different promotions. And my bars started getting all excited because I, when I would have my promotion, it wasn't just, oh, Heineken's on special. And it was Heineken's on special and Nate's bringing 50 people in the door. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, was, it, was kinda, it kept building from there. And I was like, man, this, is, this Facebook thing is incredible, but it's like so small. It's only for college kids. And I'm like, I can't wait to like get this bigger. And then they made it bigger. <laughs> so it's, and I've been doing that since, doing that since then with uh, using it for sales and marketing. But your audio cut out. Oops, sorry. How about now? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so a lot of people, you know, like you said about you're afraid to kind of say that you're running that business in the dorm room. I, I know, like that's that's a big thing when you're like, hey, nobody's going to believe me. You know, what what do I know? I have no experience in the world. How do I know how to bring something to market? But yeah. you make do, and that's the one thing about that grit and that determination of the entrepreneurial spirit that, like, you can figure it out. You know, it's like you you don't need you don't need to go. To you know, you can go to school and get that foundation because it's important. You know, it's it's one of those things that you have to get it in there. But after that, you don't have to spend twenty years in some career to start a business. You know, there's yeah. so many great stories of people starting their businesses in college, and then also you know other great stories of people starting their businesses after their kids went to college and they had all this free time, and then they realized they were passionate about running a business. And that's just there's a joy in that that dichotomy of how how people get started and. Uh, just kudos to you because I know you, you get out there and especially when you come out and I can remember countless uh, networking meetings and things like that where people are like, oh, you're going to do this? What, what, what do you know? What do you know? You don't know anything yet. You know, so yeah. that, that perseverance and uh, one of the things we talked about the other week on one of the podcasts was about uh, accepting rejection and understanding the differences of a no to a not right now. And then making sure that you didn't take every no as a never, a never situation and yeah. interpret them as a not right now. And how a lot of people get burned out on the second or third touch point because they they can't handle the rejection and they take it too personal or whatever else. But you know, sometimes you just got to roll up your sleeves and and take those beatings when you can. You know. Yeah, you know, if there's one thing that I've learned from your Bamate, it's resilience. It's what's an adaptogen. It's that ability to adapt. It's the ability to take stress. And you know, I'm. I'm at this point where like, you know, things aren't going perfect. Uh, never, almost never. You know, I'm, always, I'm like a pinball, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm kind of go with the flow at this point and you become kind of immune to the rejection. You, you know, the more you toss yourself in the fire, the more fire resistant you become. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that it really cultivates that within you and, and that belief in like, Hey, I, I can like just go out and hustle and make this thing happen no class will ever teach you nothing will ever really prepare you um and that's why i think it's it's all learning by doing it's all experiential and i encourage everyone um to do it and when i listen to one of my favorite podcasts is how i built this with guy Raz. um it's a it's an entrepreneurship one and, and when you listen to all the people they don't know what they're doing you know they're all experimenting they're learning by doing um and a lot of them don't come into their most successful business uh, until much later in their life um, and had no prior experience, they jumped from some career path into it and just said, you know, like, I want to, I want to bet on me, you know? And so I, I always encourage everyone to get, just go bet on you and don't give up, you know, and you're going to fail. But if you, if it's something that you'd like and you care about, like, you're going to have the persistence and, and it's going to help you grow in a way that you never thought was possible. There's a, there's a, um, a lot of times where, you know, you get you get a lot of people where you're let's say you're interviewing salespeople for example and you're in that interview process and they try to tell you how do you how do you how do i get trained for this and everything else and it's like you can come up with the most onboarding extensive training process in the world but really at the end of the day 
you know, there's not a book for it per se. You know, it's like there's a million books out there about sales and things like that. But to know, to to teach yourself and to learn how to situationally manage and pivot on the fly, that's that's the differential between a true salesman and someone that's an order taker. And I think that that's that's one thing that like with all the books in the world, I'm one on the bottom. I'm, I have a library full of business books. But at the end of the day, that's that number one thing like you're talking about too, that situational management, that understanding of the customer, understanding your mission and your values and listening enough to make sure that they're aligned and then selling them afterwards. And then also having the decision sometimes when you heard them, maybe you don't sell to them because you realize it's not the right match for what you're trying to do too. And you don't want to be a burden in their inventory. And you know, it's not going to sell through the way you want it for success on your brand. So that listening and that encouragement is really important and understanding that. And, and that's, like you said, there's, there's, you can take all the classes in the world and they're important for some foundational things, but unless you can situationally manage yourself and pivot on the fly in a conversation, that's a hard part. That's a hard differential for networking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What um? What would you guys? Uh, what did you say? You you have some things coming out for the for the future, the loose leaf teas and things like that. Kind of. Yeah. What would you say as far as how you would one describe your leadership style to your to your group and how you represent, uh, whether it's your employees or or your outbound community as a whole, and yeah. and kind of what's looking down the future? You said about obviously e commerce is coming in, some distro expansions possibly, and kind of let us know what yeah. we have to look forward to in the future. Yeah, so let's break that down. Um, my leadership <laughs> style, uh, my leadership style, I would say, is like organic. Like I want to understand your nature. I want to build a system around you that seems minimally invasive and plays to your strengths. And I think like it's like all about flow. Like how can we create the processes of the least resistance? How can we create efficient systems that work in harmony with each other? Um, you know, how do we not fight our nature? How do we really understand what people's strengths are and play to them? Um, and, 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 and even within like our, our path, like of, of where we're pursuing, like what are we passionate about? What, what feels like we'll have intrinsic motivation to succeed in, you know? Um, and so I, I would say that's, that's my leadership style. If that could be classified as one, <laughs> um, our distribution, I, I really look to expand our online presence. Um, I want to create more content around your Bomate around the benefits um, I'm a little camera shy, actually, <laughs> and uh, I, I like have a hard time filming myself and like you know making content. But I, I would love to just educate more people about the herb and let people know that it's more than this canned beverage. It's not just this energy drink, but it's this beautiful, beautiful herb with so many benefits. Um, and really promote the farm and the way that they're doing things. Um, we've got our loose leaf tea to get it on our website in a one pound bag. Um, we're going to start wholesaling, so basically we can sell the year extract and we can sell large bags to uh, people who want to open a tea shop people who want to start a beverage or a food product um, we're going to start selling some of these puyas or gourds basically there's a couple of different ones um, that i've been sourcing in uh, brazil and then we're going to start selling uh, some of these baldias we have a couple already available but a couple different styles and these are wonderful, um, not even if you're into your Bamante, but just if you like sustainability and you like tea and you want the maximum diffusion of your tea leaves um, without the uh, inhibition of a tea bag. Like, uh, I'd love to see Bombas just become really popular amongst tea drinkers because it is the, it's like a French press, but you get a straw. And it's, it's more fun to drink out of them. They're, they're wonderful. Um, then eventually we'll launch a, a line of thermoses these are wonderful. And if you travel around South America, you always see um, the mate drinkers carrying around their thermos. Uh, it's so, so common. Um, and it just makes it so, so readily available. Um, then the last thing would be the powder. Um, so, and this is just a beautiful, beautiful thing uh, that only is found in South of Brazil. It's called Chimarão. Um, and traditionally, you pack the entire gourd uh, in a very specific way. Um, and there's a whole ritual of preparation, um, but we would be uh, selling this powder, it's like ultra refined powder, almost like a matcha product, um, where you could, you know, use a sort of milk frother or like a whisk or something like that and create um, beverages with that. And I'll be doing some tutorials on that. Um, and I think that's really going to open up coffee shops, uh, which I would love to see because before matcha, really, you never saw like a green tea latte. Like you kind of have to have something more concentrated. So. 
I hope to get this all over the place. I hope every coffee shop has yerba mate. Uh, I hope people start knowing about it as an herbal tea, uh, not just an energy drink. And so, uh, you know, we've got plans for online and hopefully we'll uh, get some distribution here in the Pacific Northwest and, and beyond. You know, we'll keep scaling. Excellent, James. Well, hey, give a give a shout out to all your different platforms that you're on, how people can connect with you and can in touch with the brand. Yeah, um, you can follow us on Instagram, uh, Yerbana or Yerbana underscore Mate. Uh, that's our Yerba Mate account. The other ones are a wellness events account. Um, you can follow me, James J. Tan, uh, J-M-E-S-J-T-A-N. Um, and I think those are the best places to follow us. You can get, uh, get on our website, yerbana.com. And yeah, feel free to reach out. Perfect, James. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Nate. It was great connecting. Are you looking for a way to grow your business, reach new customers, and increase your sales? If so, you need the Free Mind Group, founded in 2008 and a provider of creative and strategic solutions for the food and beverage industry. Whether you need branding, marketing, product development, or innovation, the Free Mind Group can help you achieve your goals and unleash your potential. Visit our website at thefreemindgroup.com and get a free consultation today. Thank you for listening. See you next time.